I was born in Columbus, actually. I'm originally from here. I was born at Riverside Hospital. And, you know, being born normal, healthy baby, but then going to my 10-day checkup, the doctors really quickly were like, okay, no, so, you know, something's, something's a little off, something's wrong. And so I went back and got some testing and then they told my parents I was getting heart surgery the next day. So that was a very big shock for my parents. I'm the first born of the family. So, um, you know, I had a pretty interesting um, introduction to the world, I guess I would say. Um, and so, yeah, 11 days I had heart surgery. It's called co of the aorta. Um, so pretty much simplified down, one of my arteries going to my heart was too small. So they had to cut that part out and stitch the big parts together um, to allow that blood flow to my heart. And so now I have a heart murmur. After that, pretty soon my parents realized that I, they could not take care of me by myself. They needed that extra support. So we ended up moving back to my hometown where I live now is Hubbard, Ohio, um, and with my grandparents. And so they helped me through, through it all. I developed colic too and so I, I i don't remember of course but from what my grandparents and parents told me is i would cry non-stop every day and my grandpa said that he would carry me up and down the stairs up and down the stairs for hours just trying to get me to to you know feel a little bit better and interesting interestingly enough um swinging really helped Whenever they put me in the swing, I would fall right asleep, just that motion going back and forth. Um, and I would do that for hours. If, if they just needed a break, they would just put me in the swing and I would sleep for hours. And so um, then, you know, I would have yearly checkups and everything was looking good. And so when I was about three years old, my parents realized, okay, we need to put this girl in something. She's crazy. She's, you know, um, has so much energy. And so they put me in gymnastics and I, I loved it. Funny enough too, my pediatrician told me that gymnastics was actually the best sport for me to be in because it's that high intensity energy, but for a very short amount of time, you know, whereas, you know, long distance running, I would have to, my heart would be exerting for so long, which wouldn't really be conducive. Whereas gymnastics, it's a minute and a half, boom, you're done. Or, a, you know, a bar routine is 30 seconds, boom, you're done. So it's kind of like everything just fell into place. Um, and then I just, ever since then, I loved the feeling of flying and just jumping around, doing new skills, doing things just to see if I could do it. Thankfully, every year that I've gone back, it's um, been good. My heart's um, been growing with me. And um, the only thing is, so, um, I had two restrictions was one, I couldn't go in like hot tubs just because of how um, high my heart rate would get. Mm -hmm. And then the other, the bigger one I would say would be, I wasn't able to lift weights because of the same thing, the heart exertion. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, all the way up until I was 18, I wasn't able to lift weights. And so going into college, I had my checkup and I was actually cleared and they said I could lift weights, which was awesome. I mean, at the time I was like, no, now I have to lift weights. Are you kidding me? I was like, I went 18 years without having to, but couldn't have been more of a blessing. I'm kind of in shock of where I started and where I am today and super just thankful for all of the opportunities that I've been given. And I think because of that, um, not so great start it's really propelled me to know okay if i was strong as strong as i was as resilient as i was as a baby how strong and resilient can i be now as a 22 year old woman you know and so that always helps keep me keep me going because i know okay if that little girl if that little baby can do it then i can do it i remember going to a lot of college visits and just not really clicking it you know everyone kind of talks about it didn't click it didn't click and I never really understood it as I was going to um as I was going to these universities and I didn't know what it was supposed to feel like like what does clicking mean I don't I don't get it but I will have to say when I walked it you know it through Ohio State it did it clicked I could envision myself walking around campus you know we don't have the most flashy gym or um the most flashy things but it, it feels like home. You know, you don't need something to be this grand big thing for it to feel home and to feel safe. 
And that's, I guess, a word that I would say I felt safe at, at Ohio State, um, both mentally and physically. And, um, you know, I could see as I was coming in, I could see that they wanted to pro progress this uh, program of ours. Um, and we've already had such a strong foundation, you know, as, as I went in, such a strong foundation of, of team, of team camaraderie and um and i and i that drew me in felt like home and it's also very close to family you know it's three hours out and family is a very big um important aspect of my life and knowing that they could come to me or i could come to them um you know within a day or they can come to my meets where you know some of our girls on the team are from very distant states and so their parents can't always come see them and um so I knew that that was something that I wanted to. I wanted to be close to home, um, to know that my family's always here if I you know, need them. Um, and so then it, and, and then of course, with my whole story of, you know, heart surgery being born here, it, it did, it just felt like home and just kind of a full circle moment. You know, I was born here, I went away for a while and now I'm back, now I'm a Buckeye again and I don't think I would have get, gotten that much fulfillment and um, just happiness if I went to another university. The person before the athlete has kind of been my mantra throughout this year, especially now within my master's program, learning about mental health and how important it is for human beings in general, but for athletes so much because we have so many things on our plate and it's very easy to forget about yourself. You know, and so whenever someone's having a hard day or is just feeling very low about themselves, I always go over and I ask them, how are you doing mentally and how are you doing physically? You know, because a lot of the times we'll just go over to people and it's the normal thing to do is, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. But you don't really get, that's just kind of a societal thing that we've kind of created is just good, good. That's it. But so I've been really trying to kind of change that perspective of how I say it and ask how are you doing mentally how are you doing physically so they can think about it and say okay yes my mental is lacking or yes my physical is lacking and then really have an honest conversation with them about it and just helping them through it um and then yes just enjoying every moment um enjoying the pain enjoying the soreness because soon it will be over and you know yes your back may hurt and your ankles may hurt when you get older but it's never gonna be that athlete hurt, that athlete back and ankle hurt. Um, so yeah, just person before the athlete, knowing that you're worthy, you're enough and you're whole as is before, and your worth doesn't come from your performance, but just from you being an individual yourself. And then just enjoying every day and being happy and taking every day for what it is and just having, just being fun, having a fun time as a collegiate athlete.